We're at the CSUN Assistive Technology Conference in Anaheim, California, and I'm going to start out my interviews with Mike May from Good Maps. How are you doing today, Mike? Doing fantastically, having a great time because for the first time I can actually explore the exhibit hall independently with outsider assistance. Ah, now uh, let me guess, do you do that with uh, Good Maps? Uh, we do it with Good Maps, yes indeed. And the way it works is we come in and scan with a LiDAR scanner this building and the whole hotel for that matter and create a map and then the accessible app is used on an iPhone or an Android in order to give me turn-by-turn -turn directions. I can either just use it in look-around mode to see what I'm passing as I go down the aisle, or I can actually set a destination and get turn-by-turn -turn directions in the same way that you're used to with GPS outside. Okay, so part of the trick of this is somebody has to do the scanning of the environment, and is that the revenue stream for the app? Is that how it gets built? Is people pay to do the uh, scanning of their venue? Yeah, the venue pays for the scanning, and we make sure that everybody knows this is for multiple purposes. It's for blind people, there's a step-free mode for people in chairs or using strollers or carts. Uh, it's a good visual interface so that sighted people can use it. We don't want to leave them out. And uh, everybody has challenges when it comes to navigating in airports, convention centers, and large buildings. Actually, boy, you bring up airports. I've been lost quite a few times in an airport trying to find my gate. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we, there's alternative ways to do that. You can ask people for directions. Sighted people can look for signs. But it amazes me. A lot of times I ask a sighted person for directions. Where's gate 10? And they say, oh, I don't know. I'm not from here. And I'm thinking, well, just look around. You can probably see it. But they don't, you know, people are stressed out in, in uh, airport situations. So what's the interface like for you? Describe, uh, we're, we're at a conference right now and it has been mapped out for you. What, what is it like? How do you use it? Well, the uh, look around mode is my favorite because then I just, I point the phone. I want to know who's down this aisle that we're standing in. We're, we're in the middle of it. Amazon is next to it. And if I point my phone in that direction, then it's telling me either through the phone or through my earpiece. I have these headphones that don't block my ears. So I can walk along and just actively hear what I'm passing, or I can pick a, a business like Ira and make that my destination. Then it tells me, go down this aisle, go you know 300 feet, turn left, turn right, and then arrived at destination. Does it tell you it's coming up on your right, give you like some indication you're getting close, hotter, warmer, or warmer, colder, colder, warmer? Yeah, there actually is a getting warmer mode, but a lot of times it's just turn by turn directions, how many feet to go, it says approaching turns, so you slow down, you don't miss the turn, in, in much the way, same way as things happen with your GPS in the car. That is really cool. Now, what is the cost to the user of, of uh, Good Maps? There's no cost to the user. The apps are free. It's just paid for by the venue. Of course, the big challenge is how many buildings are mapped. And right now, we're kind of where GPS was 25 years ago, where there's not a lot of maps, but that's something we're changing actively in railway stations, uh, and first in English-speaking countries, but expanding to others uh, as things go along. That sounds terrific. Uh, can I ask you an airport, and yet, like Los Angeles International Airport, is that one mapped? LAX is not mapped. Uh, the two airports we've done so far are Portland, Oregon, and Louisville, Kentucky, with many more to come. So is there a way for people to encourage these airports or train stations or venues to uh, get on board? Well, I think the importance of a conference like CSUN is that there are a lot of companies here. Uh, I, I talked to somebody from Hilton yesterday. They have 35 people here. There's banks, there's um, airports, there's the United Nations. So all sorts of people are coming here to learn about things and so that's why we have a booth so they can come by and learn about this new technology and see how it fits in to their environment for not only navigation but for facility management. Once you have accurate maps then they can be used for asset tracking and lots of other purposes. Well, that is really interesting. One of the things I always like to pitch to people is that if you want to increase your audience Whatever that audience is, make things more accessible because by not including accessibility, you're basically excluding potential customers. So why wouldn't you want to do this? Yeah, exactly. We're customers. I, I hate malls, and so I would not do anything more than just destination shopping in a mall. Now, I've been into a mall. I can browse. I can window shop. I can go in, buy chocolate, buy gifts, and, and find out what's there, not just the place that I'm targeting. 
that is a really good point. So that's back to potential customers, right? It's more inclusive, gets more customers. That's all good. Well, how would people find out more about Good Maps? And by the way, I love the name Pod Feet because, of course, we're a pedestrian focused company for, for everybody. So Pod Feet kind of fits into that. You can get more, more information by going to goodmaps.com and you can download the app with Good Maps, which is one word, space, explore is the indoor map. And then we also have another app that focuses on outdoor navigation that's accessible. And what's that one called? That's called Good Maps Outdoors. Oh, very good, very good. Well, it was really nice talking to you, Mike. I wish you guys the best of luck. This sounds like a cool endeavor. Nice meeting you, Allison. Thanks for stopping by.